Hey guys, Jesus here, and today we are going to be doing an Oscars uh, predictions slash thoughts on the nominees stuff thing. Um, the Oscars is this Sunday. This is the 2023 Oscars, and um, yeah, I figured I should make content about it because I I, I talk about movies, so let's do that. <laughs> I'm not I'm not redoing this intro. Okay, you're you're getting a sleep deprived video today. <laughs> um, all right, first up we have actor in a leading role. Um, I, okay, so I have, I have seen Elvis, I've seen the Banshees of Inishiring, and I've seen The Whale. I've not seen After Sun, and I've not seen Living, so, um, my apologies about that. Uh, honestly, I would give it to Brendan Fraser. Um, I think uh, Austin Butler and Colin Farrell were really great, but I think that what Brendan Fraser did in in the whale is like genuinely pretty incredible and like he really had to pull i feel like to to do, to do a performance like that you really have to like pull out of your soul <laughs> um so yeah and then who do i think should win or who do i think will win i i think it's gonna go to Bren, brendan fraser as well um, I think it could go to Austin Butler. Um, I don't know. It's like the Academy, they, they always like to give it to people who play like real, real people. Um, you know, cause I think didn't Rami Malek win for Freddie, Freddie Mercury. So I think it could go to Austin Butler, but I want it to go to Brendan or I think it will go to Brendan Fraser and I want it to go to Brendan Fraser. Okay. Actor in a supporting role. Um, here we have Brendan Gleeson for the Banshees of Inishirian, Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway, Judd Hirsch for the Fablemans, Barry Ko Ko Kogan Keegan for the Banshees of Inishirian, and Kehui Kwan for Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think that it should go to Brendan Gleeson. Um, I think of all of these performances, I think he, I think he gave the best one. Um, I think I think it will go to Kehui Kwan. He just has way too much momentum at this point. I I can't imagine he doesn't get it. Um, but I think if it doesn't go to Kehui Kwan, I think it'll either be no. I think if it yeah if it doesn't go to Kehui Kwan, um, I think it would probably go to Brendan Gleeson. Like I think Brendan Gleeson has an outside shot, but no, Kehui Kwan is gonna get it. By the way, I hope I'm not pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> I mean, I definitely am, so, so what am I getting? Um, but yeah, I think it should go to Brendan Gleeson, but I think it will go to Kehui Kwan. And not that I'm going to be mad about that. Um, okay, here here we have actress in a leading role. I... Oh yeah, so we have nominated Kate Blanchett for Tar, Ana de Armas for Blonde, Andrea Riseboro for Two Leslie, Michelle Williams in The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh in Everything Every All at Once. I think it should go to Kate Blanchett. I think she just gave a, an incredible performance in that movie. I think not quite to the extent of of Brendan Glees or of uh oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. What is Brendan Fraser? Uh where like, you know, feel like I feel like Brendan Fraser really had to pull something out of his soul to deliver that performance. But Kate Blanchett just totally became this obsessive, um, you know, music composer lady, and it was it was just an awe inspiring performance. Um, but honestly, at this point, I think it's I think it's gonna go to Michelle Yeoh. I mean, I think much like Kehui Kwan, I just think she has so much momentum behind her. I I think it's gonna go to Michelle Yeoh, and it's it's funny because it feels like a month ago. It was like a it was like everybody was like, oh yeah, Kate Blanchett is gonna take it, but Michelle Yeoh's got the momentum right now. Uh, I honestly, um, I honestly don't think that Anna Armas, Andrea Riseborough, or Michelle Williams really have a chance. Um, shout out to Andrea Riseborough though. I don't, I, I'm not gonna get into it because that's not what this video is about. But what? So basically, there was a bit of a controversy with Andrea Riseborough because her nomination came through from like sort of grassroots campaigning almost where. Um, I think a couple of celebrities, like I think Gwyneth Paltrow was one of them. They basically started just like 
telling Oscar voters to watch to Leslie because Andrea Riseborough deserves a nomination and in a sort of a grassroots way because obviously this was it was a, it's a really small movie and you know they don't have uh money to do a four year consideration campaign and through grassroots campaigning Andrea Riseborough managed to get the nomination and there were like some people that were like this is suspicious you 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 the uh, people are using their clout to to get Andrea Riseborough a nomination. And it's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Studios pumping million dollar marketing campaigns to get nom to get nominations, right? To advertise to get nominations. That's that's fine and dandy. Nothing weird going on there. But grassroots campaigning, oh, that's suspicious. I don't know. I thought what they did to Andrea Riseborough was absolutely disgusting like it's it's it, it like the oscars already has this um this reputation of just being a bunch of like hollywood elites sniffing their own farts and the fact that there was a any controversy at all surrounding andrea riseborough being nominated uh doesn't exactly help that reputation so i just wanted to talk a little bit about that but andrea riseborough was incredible in two leslie like her performance is great um i don't think it's gonna win i don't think it should win but shout out to Andrea Riseborough. All right. Next up, we have actress in a supporting role. Here we have Angela Bassett, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Hong Chow in The Whale, uh, Carrie Condon in The Banshees of Inishirin, Jamie Lee Curtis in Everything Everywhere All at Once, Stephanie Hsu in Everything Everywhere All at Once. I, I'll be honest. I think Stephanie Hsu is really good in everything every all at once. Um, I think Jamie Lee Curtis is really good in everything everywhere all at once. But I don't understand why Jamie Lee Curtis is in this. Like, she's good. She's good. She's really good in it. But nominated for Best Supporting Actress? Eh, I don't know about that. Um, Stephanie Hsu, I think, is a, is, is a, cool, uh, is a cool nomination. Um, Carrie Condon was great in The Banshees of Inishirin. Hong Chao was really good in The Whale. Um, I think Angela Bassett was amazing in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Honestly, I would give it to Hong Chao. Um, but I think it's going to go to Angela Bassett. I think she's had... Um, I think she has the momentum behind her. So yeah, I think she's going to win it. I would personally give it to Hong Chao. But I'm also not going to be mad because Angela Bassett w wins it. Um, I mean, she did do the thing. Um, so... All right, next up, uh, animated feature film. All right, straight up, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I watched Marcel the Shell with shoes on. I did not watch Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I did not watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I watched like the first 10 minutes because I was at a place where they were showing it. But it was like at a, it was like at a party. Not a party, but like it was like at, a, at an establishment um, on my college campus. And they were showing it and I was like, I, I, I want to watch this in my own private time. So I was like, I was like trying not to pay attention to it, but I heard it. So my, my relationship with Puss in Boots, The Last Wish is tainted because of that. So I haven't watched it, but it looks really good. Sea Beast, haven't watched. Turning Red, I watched. So of the movies that I have watched, uh, uh, which is Pinocchio and Turning Red. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd have to give it to uh, Pinocchio, but I really like Turning Red. Or honestly, you know what? You know what? No, 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 no. I would give it to Turning Red. Screw it. Because Turning Red, Turning Red is, I think it's my favorite Pixar movie. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's like objectively the best Pixar movie. Not that any movie is objectively the best Pixar movie. Like, sure, I got more emotions out of like the first five minutes of Up. You know, it's, it's not as you know, fascinating to watch as Wally. -E. Um, eh, so, but turning red is maybe just the most delightful Pixar movie. I think they've ever made. I don't know. Like I just th so thoroughly enjoyed watching this movie. It just made me happy watching it. So, you know what I'm going to, I would give it to turning red. I think there's no doubt that Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is going to win this. I think it has the most momentum behind it. Um, and I, I mean, it's, it's really good as well. 
Um, but you know what? I'm gonna uh, maybe throw Puss in Boots in there. Puss in Boots as a as a hail mary, like maybe, because like people love Puss in Boots. The word of mouth has been incredible. Um, so like I that's that's one where it's like Puss in Boots could win. I think it could. I think I think Mo. I think uh, Pinocchio has sort of that Oscar vibes surrounding it, right? It's Guillermo del Toro. It's this art house uh, iteration of Pinocchio. Puss in Boots. It doesn't. It has sort of that scrappy sort of underdog feel to it, but it is really loved. So I don't know. I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be Pinocchio. I think it could maybe be Puss in Boots. I think it should be Turning Red. Granted, I haven't seen Puss in Boots. Uh, so there's that all right cinematography uh nominees all quiet on the western front bardo false chronicle of a handful of truths elvis empire of light tar out of these i would give it to okay so i haven't seen bardo and i have not seen empire of light um oh man this is a hard one because I feel like I feel like all of these, all of these are good, and or I feel like all quite on the Western Front, Elvis and Tar. I feel like they're good in their own way. Um, I think I I think on honestly, I think I would give it to Tar. I think there are a lot of really great shots in this, um, but they're they're obviously more like um simplistic shots, um, but like you know crazy and wacky like an Elvis it's not necessarily better I, I would give it to Tar I think this one is going to go to All Quiet on the Western Front though um because that that movie is incredible um like just the the shots in it are, are really good as well um they're very very well done so I think it's going to go to All Quiet on the Western Front but I, I honestly I think I would give it to Tar I think Especially, like, the long takes in that movie are really phenomenal. The framing of of a lot of the shots are phenomenal as well. Um, but, yeah, I think All Quiet is going gonna, is gonna to get it. All right, next up, costume design. Uh, we have nominated Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything All Over, <laughs> Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Um, I have not seen Babylon uh and i have not seen mrs harris goes to paris um i would give it to honestly i think i i think i would give it to elvis i mean you know it's a period piece so obviously they have to do a lot of that stuff um and get that era right i think and i think the i think all of that was just really fun to look at in the movie um shout out to everything everywhere all at once because at first when you hear best costume design it's like oh yeah no for sure like because of all of the different iterations and all of the different costumings of all of the different sort of not to hate to use mcu terminology but variants of all the characters it's like oh yeah no that, that there, there, there's some neat costume design in there as well um i mean black panther was good as well but I don't, I don't know if I could give it to you after those stupid Iron Man Dora Milaje suits. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I would give it to Elvis. and But I honestly, I think Babylon is probably going to win. I haven't seen it, but it's like about Hollywood and they're all wearing fancy dresses and whatever. I, I think Babylon's probably going to win. All right, next up we have uh, directing. For that, we have uh, the Banshees of Inisherin. Uh, the Daniels for I've really I haven't been talking about the people so I'll, I'll start now. Martin McDonough for Banshees of Inisherin, the Daniels for Everything Everywhere at Once, uh, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Ostland for Triangle of Sadness. I would give it to the Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once, um, just because that movie is so insane. And I think it is really a director's movie when you have that much insanity balancing that with the genuine heart and emotion that is in the movie as well. Um, 
yeah, I, I would personally give it to the Daniels. Uh, who do I think it will go to? I think it's going to go to the Daniels as well. I don't know. But this is this is honestly one of them where I'm like, I could see it going to Steven Spielberg for the Fablemans. Just because it's the Oscars and they, they like Steven Spielberg. Um. Uh, so yeah, I would say it's, I think it's probably down between the Daniels and Spielberg. Um, but I, I, I think it's going to go to the Daniels. I don't know. I, I got, I got a gut feeling about that. So we'll see. Okay. I haven't seen any of these documentaries, but for the sake of predictions, I'll, I'll just say sure. <laughs> uh, I think N- Navel, Navel knee will win. <laughs> sure. Uh, documentary short films. I don't, I haven't seen this. Uh, I haven't seen any of these, but I think, uh, oh, wait, there was a funny one. Where's the, there was one about dicks. I thought there was, oh, maybe those are just shorts, not documentary shorts. I'll give it to Stranger at the Gate, because why not? Um, okay, film editing. Here we have Mikhail E.G. Nielsen for The Banshees of Inshirin, Matt Vila and Jonathan Redmond for Elvis, Paul Rogers for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Monica Willie for Tar and Eddie Hamilton for Top Gun Maverick. I would give this to Everything Everywhere All at Once. I mean, there's some really fantastic edits in that movie and sequences where like editing is really important. Um, and I also think it's gonna go to Everything Everywhere All at Once. I don't know. I I really th- I I think it will. Um, I have another gut feeling about that. Just I mean, just when, when you think about the editing bay, right for those scenes especially when it's like really quickly going through all of the different universes um yeah i i I think i i think it should go to everything everywhere i think it will go to everything everywhere all right next up international feature film here we have all quiet on the western front argentina 1985 close eo and the quiet girl i've only seen all quiet on the western front um and so i think that should win (laughs) that's what i would pick because it's the only one i've seen and i think it will win i mean it's nominated for best picture how how could it not win that that would be stupid (laughs) okay makeup and hairstyling we have all quiet on the western front the batman uh black panther wakanda forever elvis and the whale Ooh, i feel like i feel like this is between the batman and the whale um, by the way, I am I am upset that the Batman isn't nominated for more stuff in here. I am big mad about that. Um, just, just saying. Uh, but yeah, because of the Penguin and because of Brendan Fraser, man, as good as the Penguin is, I think I would give it to the Whale just because. Um, I mean, obviously Brendan Fraser is more prominent. We see more of his body because we have to actually... He, I think we see him like semi-shirtless and stuff. Like We have to see his legs and all that. With Colin Farrell, for the most part, it's just his face, right? Um, I mean, I'm sure he also did get like somewhat of a fat suit because he's more portly than than Colin Farrell is in real life. Um, so yeah, I, I would I would give it to the whale, though. Because, yeah, and I think it probably will go to the whale as well. Um, because of Brendan Fraser. So, yeah. All right, best original score, All Quiet on the Western Front, Volker Bertelman, Babylon, Justin Hurwitz, The Banshees of Inisherin, Carter Burwell, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Sun Looks, The Fablemans, John Williams. I'm not going to lie, I don't remember the music from any of these movies. I... Full disclosure. Um, but... I I think it's probably going to go to John Williams for the Fablemans. So, by the way, I should say the Batman should absolutely be on here. What what how how is Oh, you know what? I never mind. I think it's going to go to Babylon. I haven't seen Babylon, but that is the only one of these movies where I've seen anybody talk about the music. <laughs> So I I think it's gonna go to Babylon. Um I haven't seen Babylon, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I think it probably should win. <laughs> Cause I think it's Babylon is I don't remember what's oh gosh, what's his name? I think it's directed by the guy who made La La Land. So I would assume he probably used 
music better <laughs> than most of these other movies that I've seen, but don't remember the music for. <laughs> Best original song. Uh, applause from Tell It Like Woman, music and lyrics by Diane Warren. Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, music and lyrics by Lady Gaga. It's a Clayface reference. And Blood Pop, Lift Me Up from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Uh, okay, yeah, Ryan... Uh, Rihanna, I think, right? Yeah. Natu Natu from RRR, music by M.M. Kiravani, lyric by Chandra Bose. This is a Life from Everything Ever All at Once, music by Ryan Lott, David Byrne, and Mitski, lyric by Ryan Lott and David Byrne. I'm going to say... <laughs> okay, so I haven't seen RRR. I haven't seen Tell It Like a Woman. But if I remember correctly, Top Gun Maverick and Black Panther Wakanda Forever... Those those songs aren't even used in the movie. Am I am I right? Isn't the Lady Gaga song done in the end credits? And Lift Me Up, isn't that also in the end credits? Maybe is it in the post credit scene with T'Challa where you see his kid after that is when the music starts? Am I right or am I wrong about that? So I'm like, I don't even I don't even know if I count those. <laughs> Cause they're not even used in the movie. Are original songs usually used in movies? I'm honestly not sure. But it's like, I don't know. I don't remember this as a life from everywhere all at once either. So, I don't know. I'll 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 give it to RRR. Because I think people I've again, I've heard people talk about that song. And I think it's actually in one of the dances in the movie. So I think that one should win, even though I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> and I think Lift Me Up will win, probably because of Chadwick Boseman. Um, and the emotions surrounding that song. Um, hold on. I actually have to reset my camera. I'm not editing. I'm not editing this out. Screw you. That's why. Uh, but either way, here we are. The big dick award. Maybe the only one that matters. Some people would say that. I wouldn't say that. Uh, I respect all the other awards. Best picture. All right, the nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, Matt Gernred is a producer. Okay, I don't need to read the producers. <laughs> Avatar The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inisherin, and Elvis. Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. All right, straight up, I would take out Oh, I will say, I have not seen Women Talking. I have not seen Triangle of Sadness. Um, okay, I've seen all the other ones. I would take out Top Gun Maverick, and I would take out Avatar and replace either of those with the Batman. You're telling me that the stupid Save the Whales movie? And, oh, look at us, we're, we're, we're flying planes. <laughs> telling me that beats the Batman? You're telling me Tell me that uh, James takes me 11, 11,000 years to make a movie. Uh, uh, Christopher um, stupid dumb face McQuarrie is beating my, the goat Matt Reeves. Tell me. All right. That's all. That's all. Um, I'm not going to get too into that. <laughs> um, but, okay, I think that, I mean, it just has so much momentum. I think everything, everywhere all at once is going to take it. It just has so much momentum. I think it's going to take it. Um, And I think it should take it. I think it should. I, I just, that movie, like, the way that that movie is as ridiculous as it is, but hits as hard as it does is genuinely phenomenal and astonishing. Um, I would put Tar as a close second. Um, because I, I really enjoyed Tar as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I think everything I everywhere all at once is going to take it. And I think it should take it honestly. Um, yeah. So we'll see about that. Uh, production design, all quiet on the Western front, avatar, the way of water, Babylon, Elvis, the Fablemans. Um, you know what? I think that All Quiet on the Western Front 
will and should take it. Um, oh, you know what? Never mind. I think Babylon is going to win this. Because it's the Hollywood effect, right? Because they recreated Hollywood. I think Babylon will take it. Um, I think All Quiet on the Western Front should take it. Uh, yeah. Short film animated. I have not seen any of these. I'm just going to say the year of my year of dicks will and should take it. Um, short film live action. I've not seen any of these. I'll say Le Pupil uh, will take it. But I think Ivalu should take it. Sound design. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front. Avatar, The Way of Water. The Batman. Elvis and Top Gun Maverick. I think that. I think it's between the Batman and Top Gun Maverick, probably. Um, just because of that Batmobile and the Batman was incredible and the jet engines and Top Gun Maverick. You could. I would give it. You know what? I think the Batman should win this. But I think Top Gun Maverick will win it. Honestly, okay, you know, this is a hot take to say that Top Gun Maverick was just loud. Because, like, I remember, my, I, I don't know if I'm just be- turning into an old man, but my ears hurt <laughs> in the theater with Top Gun Maverick. It's just, I felt like that movie was just loud. The way that the, the Batman utilized its sound, I think, is a lot better. I think it was a lot more immersive. Um... I think that Batmobile is is incredible. I think whenever they decided to sort of not use sound, you know, sort of or like in that opening scene with the Riddler where it's just him breathing. I think I think the sound design in the Batman is legitimately more immersive and creative than Top Gun Maverick. I think it should win, but I think Top Gun will win. <laughs> okay, best visual effects. Doesn't even matter. Avatar can and admittedly will win. I mean, my God. Um, I mean, I think you can't... Like, I I don't think Black Panther Forever has any chance at all. Do you know what? Top, Top Gun and Batman... You know what? I will say this. All Quiet on the Western Front and the Batman and Top Gun Maverick. Shoutouts to them. Because when you're watching the movie, you have no idea where the visual effects even are. You know? Um, but I mean, Avatar is going to win. Like it's, uh, uh, even as mi- as mid as I think the movie is, the effects are incredible. So I'm, I'm not even going to make a joke about it. All right. Writing adapted screenplay. All quiet on the Western front. Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. I think, so yeah, I think Glass Onion, even though it's an original film, I think it's adapted because it's a sequel. If I understand correctly, uh, living Top Gun Maverick. Um, and women talking. Um, I think... I think Glass Onion will win. And I think it should win. I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, that is a movie that is all about the screenplay, you know? Um, it's all about the mystery. And it's like if... Like, that is a movie that is totally um totally sustained by that screenplay you know Uh, obviously all the other elements are incredibly important as well but that that's like the screenplay shines in that movie um so yeah i'll be honest i have no idea why top gun is even here like come on (laughs) okay am i the only one that thinks it's weird that top gun is even nominated like even if you like the movie it's like should it be winning oscars (laughs) for anything that isn't like cinematography maybe <laughs> and sound sure i guess i i don't know whatever <laughs> writing original screenplay the banshees of inishirin everything everywhere all at once the fable ends tar and triangle of sadness i feel like the banshees of inishirin should win this um because that that is another movie that is all about the screenplay and the dialogue um I feel like, um, and I don't know. You know what? I'm again, again, I'm getting the gut feeling that I think it will win it as well. 
Um, I think Banshees will win it. Granted, I haven't seen Triangle of Sadness. I heard that is also has a really good screenplay. Um, but anyway, I think the Banshees of Inisherin will and should win this. I'm, I, I just got that gut feeling there. Oh, is that it? No, that's it. All right. Um, so yeah, those are my predictions for uh, the Oscars 2023. Can you believe it? Um, so yeah, on Sunday, I'll probably make a video talking about, you know, my thoughts on the Oscars and the nominations. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully someone gets slapped or I, we need big events, big things to happen. Okay. You can't, you can't make a boring show and have it be safe. The Academy. Okay. All right. Get, get, get all reality TV on us. You can manufacture stuff. You, you can do that. Okay. But we, we need it to be entertaining it can't just be a normal show, okay? Because nobody cares. All right? Do, 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 I hope you realize that. Literally nobody cares. We need people to get assaulted. So I'll leave you with that. And goodbye.